Only those who enter the small Jewish cemetery in Thessaloniki in northern Greece would know of this simple memorial which preserves the memory of more than 50,000 Jews, almost 96% of the pre-war Jewish community of this city who perished in the Holocaust. Within the rest of Greece, there were more than 15,000 other Jewish victims of Nazi genocide. In the space of four years, the occupying German forces obliterated a vital Jewish presence in Greece, which dated back over 2,500 years to pre-Christian times, when the first Jewish seafarers arrived from Judea, at that time part of the Roman Empire. Known as Roman Jews or Romaniotes, they continued to arrive and settled in Greece through the thousand years of the Byzantine Empire. They were later joined by the Sephardic Jews, who in the late 15th century fled the Inquisitions in Spain and Portugal. The new immigrants settled in northern Greece, at that time Turkish ruled, in and near Salonika, where they maintained their separate cultural and language traditions for the next 400 years until the Holocaust. This map reflects the occupation of Greece in 1941, when it was held hostage to a criminal Nazi ideology, which singled out for death every Jewish child, woman, and man. Within Greece, more than 500,000 other Greek civilians died during the war from starvation and in reprisals for supporting anti-German efforts. Crete, the largest of the Greek islands, was invaded in May 1941. During this 10-day aerial and sea invasion, close to 4,000 elite German troops were lost to a combined Greek and Allied military force and to the pitchforks and muskets of citizens of Crete. It was this coincidence of fate that a Jewish family from the Greek mainland had just arrived on Crete while trying to escape by boat to Egypt. Near the city of Hanya, they searched for and found the Xiruhakis family. Now 75 years old, Mr. Stavros Xiruhakis, who was 20 at the time, continues to operate his small winery in the town of Kastelikisam. We knew the Avram family because they had recently met our father. We realized the kind of dangers our family was risking because we knew how much the Germans hated these people. But they were foreigners on this island, strangers. There was no help to be had. What would happen to these people if we did not help? Where would they go? This place up here was considered safer than Castelli because it was up in the mountains and because it was deserted. There was a spring of water so we could take care of their immediate needs. My father hunted animals and found food for them since we left our home so suddenly, taking nothing with us. We were not prepared to go to the mountains. My father helped. He tried to make them as comfortable as possible because they had no food, no place to stay, nothing. A small chapel was all there was up here. The children were young, the mother was sick. They were strangers and they needed help. Nothing else could be done. There was no other way, we had to help them. On the mainland, in the city of Argos, Mrs. Maria Kotsovou recalls the early days of the war, when British planes bombed German supply depots near the Corinth Canal. Here in this house, which at the time was our summer home, 
we hid the Matalon and Safiha's families. We didn't know them then, but after the bombing of Argos, people started running to the fields to hide. In the confusion, these two families came to us, to our home. They stayed with us for about 10 days. Everyone else left after 10 days, but they stayed. They didn't want to leave. We explained to them that this was our summer home and that we only lived there in the summer. We had to leave for the winter. Fortunately, they finally told us that they were Jewish and they asked, they pleaded for permission to stay on longer. And we understood. So we decided to stay a bit longer with them. My father was a deeply religious man and he had built a small family chapel by the house. He had faith that God would help us save these five people because we had the same God. The situation was very difficult. We had a well by the house, and every night, two or three Germans would come and sit around, take some water with them and some fruit. We passed a whole year like this with great anxiety. But we thank God that we were able to save these five people, whom we love very much. Greek partisans were the lifeline for many who were trying to escape from the Germans. Vasilis Persidis returned to a remote coastal area north of Athens to recall for us his rescue experiences. From this place and a bit to the north is where the escapes took place of all of the people who wanted to leave for whatever reason because of the German danger. We said that whoever wanted to leave, and specifically the Jews, will gather here in the east part of Attica, in the Agia Marina, where we are now. And in other places, which were secret and deserted to be safe, and from these places, fast boats will take them to the west part of Evia. From there, it was my responsibility. We will take them on animals, and those that they couldn't pay walked. And we will take them to Chakaos. It was about two and a half hours by foot. From Chakaos, the fast boats will take them to Chesme in Turkey. The island of Zakynthos lies in the Ionian Sea between Greece and Italy. 275 descendants of earlier Romanian communities faced the uncertainties of the German occupation in October 1943, shortly after the protective Italian troops withdrew. Mr. Elkana Cezanas remembers. The Germans arrived and issued three orders. One was that all of the Jews had to remain in their homes after 5 p.m. till the following day at 7 a.m. The second order was that every Jewish family must post on the door of their home a statement of how many Jews lived in the house and their ages. And the third, the third one was much more severe because it said that whoever in Zakynthos hid or tried to help a Jew would be shot on the spot. After the Germans posted their orders, they asked the mayor, the archbishop and the rabbi for a list of all of the Jews living in Zakynthos. 
The rabbi gave the list to the mayor and to the archbishop, who decided not to give the list to the Germans, but to substitute their own names. When Archbishop Chrysostomos and Mayor Carrer gave the Germans the list with only their own names, it was the signal for all of the Jews to go up into the mountains and disperse. We should not forget that after we left for the mountains and dispersed there, the villagers not only hid us, but they were very hospitable. They gave us food and took care of us until the liberation freed us. Among the prominent Athenian Greeks of the time who worked to save the lives of Greek Jews, Two, Archbishop Damaskinos and Police Chief Angelos Evert stand out. Bishop Militon recalls the Chief Rabbi's appeal to the Archbishop in March 1944, which led to the saving of 560 Jews in Athens, who the Germans had previously targeted for deportation to Auschwitz. And when the German commander came to Athens and confronted the Archbishop, here is where his famous words were said. There is something peculiar about us in the church. We do not get shot. We get hung. And I request that you fulfill this tradition. Αυτό το φως της παραδόσεως των επισκόπων εξηγείται ότι... That flame of the great tradition of the bishops stands not for the words that were said, but what was put into deeds. What are these deeds? Archbishop Damaskinos called the rabbi and told him that he had prayed to God and brought Christ into himself. And he said, I know what I'm going to do. I will confirm that these Jews had been baptized many years earlier and were Christians for many generations here in Greece. Police Chief Evert then participated by giving false identification papers to save these and other Jewish fugitives. On September 30th, 1943, Moses Pesa, the chief rabbi of Volos, sought help from his friend, Mitropolitis Iakovos Yakim. The Germans had demanded from the rabbi a list of all the city's Jews, threatening to kill him in 24 hours if he did not produce it. So the rabbi asked the Metropolitan to find out from the Germans what they actually wanted. The Metropolitan said to wait and that he would find out quickly. Instead of calling, he sent a priest to the German consul's office in Volos. And the answer the German consul gave was to tell the Jews to leave the city immediately. The Metropolitan gave the answer to the rabbi. He blessed him and advised him to take his people and leave Volos. He also gave him a short note which the rabbi could show to any villager or to the partisans wherever he and his people went. The Metropolitan wrote that the person carrying this note is a teacher and that he and his followers should be given whatever help they needed. So this is what happened. The rabbi took the note, went back to the Jewish community and told them everything that he had learned. He warned them about what would happen. The first difficulty was to convince them to leave their homes and stores and their possessions. 
and second was to convince them to go up into the mountains, which they did not know. They would have to carry the old, sick and small children. Finally, the rabbi convinced them and most of the Jews of Volos went up into the mountains. The people in the resistance and the others they met helped them. And about 600 Jews were saved. About 150 came back too early because they thought the danger was over and the Germans caught them and they were lost. In those very difficult days, it was essential for escaping Jews to have Christian friends. The Magrizo family in Larissa had such a friend in the small farming village of Amigdalia, 10 miles from their home. When news reached the Magrizos that the Germans had begun to arrest Jews in Salonika, they quickly fled to the farm of Nikolaos Argomanidis. The news they had learned from Salonika really frightened them. They were frightened because they had lost all of their relatives there who had been taken away. They lost everyone and they were really frightened. For this reason, we took them up into the mountains and all the time they kept asking me, is it safe here? Can we move further up, higher? That's why we took them to a small village high in the mountains. And there it was safe because the partisans were also in the area and they had posted guards, and they were capable of warning people if German military units were coming. There were close to 200 Jews living there, living in an old monastery. If the Germans had found them, they would have all been killed. My name is Leon Magrizos. Everything that Mr. Artsomenides said is exactly the truth about this period of time. If he thinks it was nothing for him, for us, it was everything. The Greek resistance, which had developed into partisan units after the German occupation, had different political loyalties and within each a variety of functions. In Stomio, a small village halfway between Athens and Thessaloniki, Mr. Stavros Diamandis recalls rescue events which occurred here. The Jews came here because they were being chased by the Germans. They left Volos so that they wouldn't be captured. They came here to hide in the mountains. That's why they came here, to be saved. There were four families, about 21 people, young and old people, and small children. They stayed 11 months in the village. These are the houses in which we put the Jewish families. There were eight people in one and two in the second. And they stayed there. All of the village helped them and loved them. Only one person came out and said, what are they doing here? And I said, they're my people and I'm protecting them. And after that, all of the village showed them care and love. We helped them because they were like us. We helped because they had small children, old men. The whole village tried very hard to help them. We helped them to survive through our friendship, not for anything else. It was as if they were our own. Thessaloniki, or Salonika, as it was known until early this century, had been home to a vibrant Jewish community, mostly descendants of Spanish Jews exiled from Spain at the time of the Inquisition in 1492, a city so Jewish in its character that was known as the Jerusalem of Balkans. Close to 50,000 Jews lived in Salonika when the Germans occupied the city in April 1941. During the following three years, 
they and almost all of the Jews of Greece who were unable to escape from the Germans, close to 65,000 individuals, were transported to their death in Nazi killing centers in Poland and Germany. One among the very few who was helped to avoid this fate, Mrs. Marika Paraskevaidis. On the 6th of April, 1943, the Germans closed off all the houses in the neighborhood that we had been forced into after they had thrown us out of our own houses. We didn't understand what was going on. The whole neighborhood was under siege by the Germans. My grandmother was 72 and sick. We had a little carriage so that we could move her around. I had a knapsack on my shoulders. We started out thinking that we were going to work. We knew that we were actually on our way to be killed. We didn't know it then. We started to walk. We were in a large crowd of hundreds of people and we walked up to Kostandinidi station. And there, by surprise, a young man came up to me, whose name I knew, because he lived at a nearby house. It was Dimitri Zanas. And he told me to leave the line and go with him. I told my mother, and my mother, without turning her head, spoke with my father and told him the story. And he didn't turn his head, but he nodded his agreement. And my mother removed the knapsack from my shoulders, and that was as if she gave birth to me for the second time. It was the second time I was born. If she had not pushed me out of the line, I would have never been separated from my parents and from their destination. And then we reversed our direction and we walked to freedom. In 1944, when German troops were in Greece, in Salonika, I was working on a farm 40 kilometers west of the city. Near a town called Adendro. There I was informed that a young Jewish girl was being brought to the farm and that I was to hide her. I was thinking, how could a girl from her household, how is she going to live here, in the mud? in this kind of crude place. But I said, if the Germans are chasing someone, you cannot say no. You will want to save the person. What else are you going to do? The next day she came with Dimitri Zanas and two other friends. I greeted her. We sat down, we ate, and we started to work together. 
Time passed slowly. We brought other workers from the village to work on the farm. The thought that is deep in me that I want to say, coming from my heart, is that of the 150 families who knew that she was there, no one ever said anything to the authorities, to the Germans, that a young Jewish girl was hidden with us. Marika and Stavros successfully evaded the Germans and shortly after the war were married. Theirs was a happy story and theirs was an extremely unique experience. Almost all of Salonika's Jews perished in the Holocaust. Today, in the total Greek population of 10 million, there may be 5,000 Jews, most living in Athens, and perhaps 1,200 in Thessaloniki. In other communities, as in Varia, the reconstruction of synagogues and all Jewish neighborhoods is underway as tourist attractions and to serve as a reminder of the city's earlier Jewish experience. The Israeli government in 1953 established Yad Vashem in Jerusalem as the central memorial to the victims of the Holocaust. Within this sacred site is the Garden of the Righteous, which honors non-Jewish citizens of other nations, whose selfless courage enabled some European Jews to escape. Here, among those who have so far been recognized, are close to 200 Greek nationals. A few of whom we are now privileged to know and honor as righteous among the nations. Sorry.